Are you tired of getting your projects turned down because other projects competing for the same funds have a higher return on investment ROI? We're going to show you how to use another financial calculation that will improve your odds of getting a green light for your project. Make sure you stick around until the end when we not only show you how to calculate payback, but how to present that calculation so management will buy your recommendations despite other projects maybe having an eye. ROI. To make sure we're all on the same page, let's take a quick look at ROI, what it is and how it's calculated, and the problems with this financial ratio that everyone seems to love so much. Because at the end of the day, it does not matter how much you think or I think that this is not a good measure. Most management teams still want you to calculate it. But once you understand how it works, you'll be able to better discuss it intelligently as you ever so delicately point out its flaws. So let's dive right in. Return on investment, referred to as ROI, is a financial metric that compares the cost of an investment to its gains or losses to measure its profitability. It is usually expressed as a percentage, and that can be used to evaluate the efficiency of an investment or compare it with other uh, the efficiency of other multiple investments. And typically, when you go to make a presentation to management, when you're looking to get some funds, this is one of the calculations that you'll include. This is the metric that is frequently used to decide which projects will get a company's limited investment dollars. Often, there are more projects competing for those limited investment dollars than there is money available. And many times, the accounts payable projects just don't have the projected ROI as some of the more lucrative investments. But don't give up. Stick, or stick with us and we'll show you how to make sure that this doesn't have to be the kiss of death for your dream project. But before we get to that, let's do a quick review of how ROI is calculated. Okay, we're going to eventually obviously compare ROI with payback, but we're going to start off by talking about ROI, which as I said is return on investment. Okay, and this calculation is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. You take the current value of the investment minus the cost of that investment and you divide it by the cost of that investment. And these numbers are typically um, reported as a percentage and you'll hear things like you know ROIs of 20% and so when you're in there with your AP project and it's you know showing an ROI of 8% sometimes you've got a little bit of a uphill battle okay let's just go through a simple numerical example let's say the current value of an investment was 12 million a uh, 12,000 not 12 million it could be 12 million but 12,000 and um, or the projected in uh, value of that investment and then the cost was 10,000 so you take the difference the 12,000 less the 10,000 you come up with 2,000 and then you divide that 2,000 by the cost of the investment and you get 20% or an ROI of 20% okay and it's it's pretty simple now the problem with ROI is it doesn't take into account it's the whole picture if you will it focuses on this one metric now I'm, I'm not going to deny it's an important metric but you know it's it's only one piece of the puzzle if you will it doesn't take into account at all the time value of money oftentimes though you're you're dealing with estimates estimates of what that future value is going to be and this calculation does not at all take into effect into account risk you don't measure risk um, you know the numbers are just plain straightforward given okay so as we said if you're just going to keep compare projects on or ROI basis, it's almost often difficult for your AP projects to get those investment dollars you need, even though many times those investment dollars are not huge. And sadly, often in comparison to other proposals, as we said, the amount of money is not huge. Um, and oftentimes, because the amount of money is not huge, the risk is lower, okay? Because even if the company were to lose its an entire investment, which of course it won't, um, it would not impact the long-term viability of the organization. You wouldn't have to make cuts elsewhere. But all right, I'm getting off, off topic. We're gonna to discuss how you can use this fact to your advantage when competing with proposal with sometimes astonishing ROIs in a bit. 
But first, let's take a look at payback so you understand what I am talking about. Okay, now, when we talk of, about payback, um, we are uh, in accounting and finance. We're not talking about revenge or anything like that, but we're talking about how quickly an organization will recover its investment. You might think about it as like kind of a break-even point. Clearly, the shorter the payback period, the more, more desirable and often, but not always, the lower the risk. But let's take a look at how you calculate payback, okay? So the calculation for payback is simply you take the cost um, of the investment and you divide it by the annual cash flow uh, from the investment, or I like to say the savings, if you're, if you're I'm thinking about the AP world and where we're trying to get um, some an investment in some new technology that will save some time. So you wanna talk about the savings, okay? And again, here's our simple example. So let's say the cost of the investment was $1,000 um, and your annual cash flow savings on this particular project is $2,400 or $200 a month. So to figure out the, the payback period, we take the cost of the investment, $1,000, divided by 20, the cost of uh, the annual cash flow savings and you come up with 2400 which is 0.4166 if you're you know using your calculator and then of course we want to convert that to months because who goes around talking about 0.4166 of a year so to convert it by uh, to months you just multiply it by 12 and you can see we come out with five months okay so the payback for this particular uh, project would be five months okay now keep that in mind because that's a, a, a pretty um, interesting number at least from where I sit okay so which met metric should you calculate so you know you might be tempted just to calculate uh, payback but don't you need to calculate both because management is going to want to see the ROI and you can talk about it till you're blue in the face that payback is more meaningful but it won't make a difference so don't bother okay you're only going to aggravate them and that's not going to help your your cause calculate the ROI calculate your payback and so when they ask you the IRO ROI and you tell them you know four percent or something um, don't shrivel all is not lost okay but before we get to that strategic argument the one that will help you get the green light very quickly if you're getting any value from this talk I'd appreciate it if you would take a moment to hit the thumbs up it lets both you two know and us know um, that you're getting some value from this talk and we should adjust our plans accordingly now when making your pre presentation to management and you're going to include the ROI, emphasize your short payback period, assuming it's short, especially if it's less than a year, and it often is. Then you can make the point to management that if they were out, they would allocate the funds to you that you need for your project at the beginning, um, you could quickly earn back those funds, and then it could be used a second time for a, a, another worthy project, if you will, the one that you're competing with. It could be a win-win for the company. They could end up funding two worthwhile bottom line enhancing projects with the same funds in the same period. It's a way for you to turn what seemed like a surefire no into a resounding yes, okay? Because they don't have to say no to the other guy. They just have to give you the money first and then you, you know, your project earns the money back and then it can be reinvested in the company. And by the way, your quick payback period for your project isn't the only project that will pay for itself over and over again, making you look really good in the eyes of management. We've identified five other projects that pay for themselves over and over again, and we did a short video about them, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.